On the day Roe and Casey were overturned, we promised that the Justice Department would work tirelessly to protect and advance reproductive freedom. That is what we are doing, and that is what we will continue to do. They started a task force, and in their first public action to show they are doing that, the DOJ filed a lawsuit against the state of Idaho, saying the state's abortion trigger law, which was passed in 2020 and set to go in effect in 23 days, it violates federal law. That law is called the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, or EMTALA. Enacted in 1986, it says every hospital getting Medicare funds must give the necessary treatment to stabilize a patient when they arrive at an emergency room with any condition that could put their life or their health in serious jeopardy. And that treatment could involve abortion. And that's the catch right there. It's not just life in danger, but the phrase health in serious jeopardy. Idaho's law would make it a criminal offense for doctors to provide the emergency medical treatment that federal law requires. Although the Idaho law provides an exception to prevent the death of a pregnant woman, it includes no exception for cases in which the abortion is necessary to prevent serious jeopardy to the woman's health. So according to Attorney General Garland, if a woman shows up to a hospital suffering from a miscarriage that could lead to a septic infection, or she's bleeding uncontrollably because of it, or she's suffering severe preeclampsia where her blood pressure jumps to dangerous levels, threatening her life and the life of the child, which usually doesn't happen until around 20 weeks of pregnancy, well, the doctors may be forced to deny that woman medical treatment because of Idaho's abortion ban. The federal law says her life doesn't have to be in danger, though. Her health just has to be. And because of the supremacy clause, that's the part of the Constitution that says federal law supersedes state law, well, Idaho's law would violate that. The law thus places medical professionals in an impossible situation. They must either withhold stabilizing treatment required by EMTALA or risk felony prosecution and license revocation. In so doing, the law will chill providers' willingness to perform abortions in emergency situations and will hurt patients by blocking access to medically necessary health care. So the Justice Department wants the Ninth Circuit Court to declare Idaho's law violating the Supremacy Clause, making it unconstitutional, and they want an injunction to stop Idaho from enforcing it against health care providers who give that emergency treatment. Garland was asked two questions about this lawsuit today. The first, why is Idaho the first to face such a litigation? Well, his answer was pretty simple. He said Idaho's law seems to be on its face to be in direct conflict with EMTALA and, well, because it hasn't yet gone into effect. But it's about to. And the other question he was asked, doesn't this lawsuit seem to circumvent the Supreme Court and its recent ruling on Roe and Casey? EMTALA was a decision made by the Congress of the United States. The Supremacy Clause is a decision made in the Constitution of the United States. Federal law invalidates state laws that are in direct contradiction. This has really nothing to do with anything that the Supreme Court said and certainly nothing to do with going around the Supreme Court. Okay, so all that being said, what does Idaho have to say about it? Well, plenty. Governor Brad Little, who signed Senate Bill 1385 into law on March 24th, 2020, said this. Our nation's highest court returned the issue of abortion to the states to regulate. End of story. The U.S. Justice Department's interference with Idaho's pro-life law is another example of Biden overreaching yet again while he continues to ignore issues that really should demand his attention. I will continue to work with Attorney General Lawrence Wozden to vigorously uphold state sovereignty and defend Idaho's laws in the face of federal meddling. Well, speaking of Lawrence Wozden, our outgoing Attorney General, contrary to the carefully edited assertion in paragraph 25 of the department's complaint that Idaho's laws are preempted, EMTALA actually states, Wozden says, the provisions of this section do not preempt any state or local law requirement, except to the extent that the requirements directly conflicts with the requirement of this section. So they're saying basically there shouldn't be any sort of confliction there. Wazza went on to call out the DOJ for not sitting down with the state of Idaho to work something out before filing this lawsuit to discuss the interplay between our abortion laws and EMTALA, he said, calling the lawsuit politically motivated. Instead of attempting to engage Idaho in a meaningful dialogue on this issue, the federal government has chosen to waste taxpayer money 
on an unnecessary lawsuit, he said. However, on page 11 of the 17-page lawsuit, it'd be paragraph 41, the DOJ claims to have sent a letter to the state of Idaho on July 29th, that'd be last Friday, expressing the view that Idaho's law was contrary to federal law and, quote, the United States did not receive a substantive response. So I, I have that letter right here, which arrived at the AG's office, well, it'd be last Friday in the Capitol building, Friday afternoon, mid-afternoon sometime. And it says at the very end, should you wish to identify facts or issues relevant to whether the United States should file an action, please do so no later than August 1st, 2022. They gave Idaho three days, 72 hours to respond basically to something the U.S. attorney had six weeks to put together. Not enough time in Idaho's AG opinion. However, about a month ago, we did get a glimpse of where the Biden administration might go with this when President Biden signed an executive order safeguarding access to reproductive care services, which mentioned protections granted under EMTALA. And St. Luke's which just happens to be one of Idaho's 43 hospitals participating in Medicare, and they're one of the 39 with emergency departments subject to EMTALA standards. And they shared with us a memo they received in September of last year, of 2021, from the Department of Health and Human Services, reiterating and reinforcing the EMTALA obligations for those who are pregnant or dealing with a loss of pregnancy. Quote, the determination of an emergency medical condition is the responsibility of the examining physician or other qualified medical personnel. And those treatments are also under the purview of the doctor or other qualified medical personnel, which, according to this memo, could include abortion. So they've been talking about this and planning for it for quite some time. So what does this all mean? Well, like it was predicted by Idaho's attorney general, for the last three legislative sessions, Idaho's abortion laws will be challenged in court because of their constitutionality. And it's gonna cost Idahoans a chunk of change and do so. We don't know yet when this federal lawsuit will see a courtroom. However, we do know at least two of Idaho's recent abortion laws will see the inside of the state Supreme Court with their lawsuits being heard tomorrow morning.